how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing this this uh birthday party, and it's a lot of work. A lot of work. So tell me about it. What's happening? Who, who's uh, I saw DJ uh, your guy Eddie B houses or uh, Eddie, Eddie B Swift Eddie is going to be there. Eddie B Swift is going to be there. We have DJ Lucho. We have uh, Tony Touch. We have um, MDW that's going to host the event. Awesome. We awesome. have Ted Smooth. So these are basically, you know, DJs that are, you know, New York based, but they're also world known, you know, DJs. So, and I wish I had you, but you're in Chicago. What's up? With How that? is Tony Touch? I, I've always I've seen a couple of his records. I heard of a couple of, of his mixes. He seems like a great guy. He's such a smooth, laid back dude. Like everybody likes him, and he's got yeah. this cool vibe about him that he just makes you feel super comfortable. He was my role manager, my first role manager when I did Make Noise. Really? Back 1988, yes. So we've been That's awesome. I, uh, I, yeah, he's, he's on my list of people that I'd love to meet. So Tony Touch is one of, yeah. Yeah, he's great. A, they're all cool, great, you know, dudes. I wish I could have you. You're in you know, Chicago doing your thing. You know, you're more than welcome to come in and do your magic. You know, you have an open door. Uh, thank you yeah. very much. I'll check my calendar. All yes, right. I know you're a busy guy too, though. You know, it's a good thing, though, right? To be busy. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank goodness that this COVID thing, the zombie apocalypse, is pretty much over with. Hopefully, you know, I, I hear now a second strain is coming, but you know, well, uh, hopefully that's going to be over with. Um, yes. Do you have time to talk? I want to. I want to talk to you. Yes, you I, have, well. I have time. I have time. I've been running around. I just came back from the supermarket. Um, it's a little crazy out there today, you know, and then my AC is not working. So I'm a little sweaty, but it's all good. I'm happy to talk to you. Um, I have, a, I have time. What's up? So tell me about the supermarket. Uh, what did you, what did you buy? Well, my son loves Oreos. He loves junk food. Um, he's 14. So I try to keep him, you know, eating. He's growing. So he's eating out of a household. Um, so I just bought juices, fruit, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff so he can constantly, you know, pick on. But he eats, he eats like a like a big man already. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about the very beginning. So uh, I know we've talked we've, we've talked about this before, but let's talk about Lizette Melendez and how you got discovered in the very very beginning. Um, if you want to start there. Well, wow! You threw me for a loop. Wow! Yeah, that so was the very go. beginning. How did you how did, how did you get into music? What was the first your your first introduction to music? Were you just a, did you come out of the womb singing? No, I mean, I wish I did, but obviously, you know, just growing up, I was super shy, very introverted. So when Lisa, make a long story short, when Lisa Lisa came out, I was like, this girl looks like me. Um, I can basically, I used to mimic her all day, just, you know, listen to every one of her tracks on her album and learn them, her, her influence, in, inflections, um, her tone. I learned everything on her side of like how to, how she just was able to bring these songs to, you know, to life. And I listened to the classics like Barbra Streisand and, you know, more of the classic, um, you know, Broadway type of, you know, musicals as well. And I try to just make my voice be able to do different things and different styles. But I was too shy to show anybody, you know. So when Lisa came out, then it made me feel more comfortable because now there's this girl that that's appealing that people are taking to. No one looked like her back in the day. Um, and I felt like if she can do it, I can do it. You Absolutely. Know, Have you shared this story with her? Have you talked to her, Lisa? I'm, well, she did the remix. She did the Rise remix. Yeah. Um, Judy Torres and and I, she was blessed. You know, I mean, I was blessed to have her in the studio with me. Um, but I did tell her over time. I try not to fan out whenever I see her. Right. She's become such a great, great inspiration and a friend. Um, I just tell her, you know, certain things that are happening in the business, and I give her like a quick, you know, rundown and just to hear a little bit of insight from her and. Sometimes I get, you know, good feedback, great feedback from her. She's a busy girl, though, you know. So it was a long time coming, like, for me just to meet people. I didn't know anyone in the business, so I knew all the break dancers, like uh, Crazy Legs from Rocksteady. I was always in the jams, and I didn't know any producers at all. So uh, I ended up meeting a guy called Tomax, which told me, you know, he knew of a producer. We ended up doing like a boy girl group, took it to Carlos Burials. We sounded horrible together. Um, so after that, I kind of disappeared a little bit. Um, then Tomas called me back telling me, look, I wrote a, re a, a song with Carlos. He needs a singer. It was Carlos after Dark Burials, you know, featuring an artist. So I came in and I spoke with Carlos and I ended up going to the studio on a Sunday. I'll never forget because I ended up hanging out that Saturday before. 
So I went to the studio, I'm like, oh, my voice was not really up to par, but we ended up cutting Make Noise. And that record was kind of different stylistically, like vocally, it was completely different for me. So that was just the beginning. It had that track, that the, the track that people still talk. I remember meeting Carlos at the uh, at a winter music conference right after Together Forever, Forever came out. And Michael Becker from Columbia Records said, hey, this is Carlos Barrios. He's the producer. And, and uh, I was like, this guy knows things. Super cool. Um, I know when Together Forever came out, I have the cover right here. And you shared the story about uh, about how they cut your hair off. Oh, God. Well, when see, when I first started, I didn't have an image. And that's one thing that I always advise all the up-and-coming artists to find out who they are, be comfortable in their skin, and don't let a record label try to you know, mold you into something you're not. So when I first started, I didn't know if I wanted to wear a baseball cap. I wanted to wear stilettos. I was in between the two. Um, so anyway, when we did that photo session, my hair was almost the way it is now. You know, I, I, I picked it up. My hair was crazy and curly. So I ended up picking it up with a, like, uh, they bobby pinned it and it had loose curls almost like now. So they took the picture and they photoshopped it into a different hairdo. They got rid of all the little baby hairs, all the little curls, and it became that. When I saw the photo, I'm honestly going to tell you, when I saw that 12 inch, I cried. Yeah. I just cried. I was like, this is not me. It doesn't look like me. It looked, I looked like a lot older, I felt. Um, but that's the nature of the beast. After that, I learned. I'm like, listen, I got to either learn of, you know, what it is that I want uh, my people to see, figure it out. And from there, I learned the hard lesson. Just be me, you know? Yeah. So I was... I was just one between the curly hair. I went between, you know, just different looks, but it just, it was always me. So my advice to the up new jacks, just make sure you, <laughs> you are before you end up taking that photo that you're going to not like. So I remember watching the movie. Uh, I like it like that. And that was the, the poster in the, was it her washroom or her? Oh, her yes. Her room? The movie, I like it like that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. I go, that's Lizette Melendez. How cool is that? I know. I when I saw the movie, I never even knew. I mean, I just watched the movie one day. I'm like, that's my foot. They never told me. No one ever told me anything. So when I watched the movie, I was so I was floored. I'm like, that's my picture. And I, it was such a proud moment, you know, um, to know that people knew, you know, of me to put me up on, you know, it was a movie. It was, you know, a movie. And I was proud. So, you know, I've been around for a while. I'm happy to still be doing what I'm doing. I want to thank you. <laughs> for always playing all my current music. I still put out music and I put, I see that as sprinkling, you know, the, the birthday cake. Cause what I did with together forever and a day in my life and goody, goody, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to match that. You know, I'm just, I just want to be able to continue to put out music just to have a good time with, you know, Does it feel like, it. uh, like do, making new music too. It helps. Um, you, I mean, I'm sure you're very proud of together, together Forever, A Day in My Life, The Goody Goody, and, you know, the whole list, your whole roster. But having something new to talk, to, to bring out to people, I'm sure it's got a, okay, cool, here's the songs now, here's the new song. Just kind of put it on a plate, to, you know, and uh, like you're fishing, you know, like, what do you think of this, this kind of thing. And uh, it's got to be funner to go out and perform some, some something new for your, for you, right? I love it. I love it because, you know, now I know how to re record my own vocals. So with, with, throughout COVID, I have, you know, equipment at home. So I recorded my own vocal. I send the track and I get a track back and I record it. And I, you even did a mix for me. You know, even that mix that you did for Stop in the Name of Love, that's Love the mix you. that I performed. Oh, because cool. you gave it that extra oomph that I really thought it needed. Um, and I just do songs just for fun and just to let the fans know, look, I'm still doing my thing. I'm not um, missing an action. I'm going to continue even Moody. I did a record for Moody that I grew up to you know, listening to all, you know, back in the day, watching people break dance to the, that type of music. So I always, that record always stayed in my head. And I said, you know what, let me put it out, you know, and I put it out, you know, no harm, no foul. I'm going to perform that as well. So I'm building up my, my Rasta to perform. So when I do my solo events, like for my birthday party, I'm not timed. Like a lot of these big event events, I, they give me 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15. That's not enough time for me to just give you Lizette Melendez. Because right, you know, right. I have time passes by, a day in my life together forever. I have uh, He's My Baby, Goody Goody, you know, Now with Stop in the Name of Love and Moody. 15 minutes is not going to cut it, you know. Absolutely. So that's why I'm also doing the birthday party because I want to be able to expose a little bit more of myself. Right. Um, so it's going to be fun. It's definitely going to be fun. 
How exciting. That's cool. I mean, all this new, it's, you're not done yet. That's great. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah it's going to be great. I mean, and I, ins- I try to inspire people. Um, I don't know if we, I don't, I honestly don't know where freestyle is going to go. I think it did what it did back in the day. Um, I don't see those big records the way they were promoted, being promoted today because the, mis- the record business is not what it was. So everybody's putting our records on iTunes and, you know, Spotify. And sometimes they're not all that great. I'm going to keep it real. So it, it makes it challenging and difficult for people that put out good records because it's so flooded that when you put out a record, it goes unnoticed sometimes. And it's That's right. Be- I think that I like about you as an artist is like, you don't, you're not really worried about what everybody else is doing. You're still as a Melendez. You're, you get laser focused and you're just doing you. And, you know, love it or hate it, it's still you. And that's, you're just going to, hey, you know, it's like anything. If you don't like, you know, if you're a cook, if you don't like this meal, you know, take a look at the menu. I get some other things that you might like. You know what I mean? So, exactly. uh, and you keep bringing your A game every single time. I mean, your performances are always outstanding. You never disappoint. Even when inside your brain you're thinking, well, the monitor's not working or this or that. You always, your worst show is a lot of artists' best show. You know what I mean? So um, you still you're still doing it. I, I you know, I, and it's this is coming for me too. You know, I'm a I'm a huge fan. Um, are you are you more at home in the studio or on stage? Would you say? You know, to be honest, I'm more at home on stage. You know, it because it gives me the opportunity to be me and to showcase who I am, and and my fans want to see me, and it's it's. Although it's a multi-act, you know, night, but when I'm on that stage, it's my time. So it make it just brings a sense of comfort. Um, last my last show when I did in San, when it's in San Antonio, they lost my luggage, <laughs> so I had to perform with the sh- with the clothes I went to the airport with. I was not happy about that. My hair was a mess, <laughs> but I said, you know what? The fans are not going to care about that if I don't show up. It's going to make it seem like I just never show up, showed up. So I went up there and I. And I did the best I could. They showed me so much love. Pray. And I was so excited. You know, um, when I'm off stage, I'm, I'm quiet. I'm just, I'm reserved. Um, I'm very shy by nature. I've learned how to just get out of myself a little bit more because it can come across as um, cold. And I, I am not a cold person. I, I love what I do for a living. And I love my fans and my DJs. So it's just a matter of figuring out how to get out of the shyness that I've always had. And it's something that slowly but surely you get out of. Um, but when I'm on stage is my comfort. That's, that's my best time. And it, I can be me. I'm accepted for, for that person that's up there. When I'm off stage, it's a little, it's a little kind of, sometimes it gets a little awkward. Right, you're in it, and then that way there's no uh, before and after. It's all your moment is zen, and it seems like you could definitely comes off on stage too. You really, you know, you're really you're 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 great. Thank you're great. you. And everybody yeah. has their shine. Everybody has their their personality that comes across. And with me, I just now now I you know as I matured, I'm by nature, I'm I'm a funny person. I love to joke. I love um, I have dark humor. Um, like my son, my 14 year old has dark, dark humor, but it's something that once you know me, you're going to know and you're going to get me, you know, if, if, and that's when I'm on stage, they get me, you know uh-huh. what I mean? They get me, my people, I feel like they get me. Um, so I'm even a jokester. I'll crack in a joke. I'll throw in a little humor here and there and they like it because I'm real and I need to be, I was I don't think I was quite as relatable before as I am now. Because sometimes I go on, you know, some like right now I'm hot, I'm a mess, I'm sweating, my <laughs> AC is not working. I know I'm not gonna ha- be happy with the way I look at the end of the interview, but I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's real, it happens, and my yeah. AC is not working. I'm not gonna shut you down because it's not working. I want to talk to you. Right. So you know, it's just and all these filters that they have now on Instagram and all the pictures when you take them, it's kind of like when people see you and you know that's not what you look like all the time. You know, flawless. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, we have it rough now. You know, I think women have it rough. You know, the older we get, you know, we have to, keep, you know, maintain. The older men get, they just get distinguished and they look, you know, handsome. <laughs> you know what I mean? it's, it's kind of rough, but I love what I do for a living. Anyway, I it could be worse. That's for sure, right? It could definitely yeah, be, it could worse. be worse. I'm, I'm really happy where I'm at, though, with everything. That's awesome. Are you still writing every day? Are you... Uh... You know, I have, um, 
I haven't written anything, you know, and it's funny because it's calling me. It's calling me like the mic. I have my mic and my, my equipment here. It's calling me. And but I'm not ready. You know what I mean? Like it's I'm starting to feel that antsiness that I have to start recording, but it has to be right. Um, so I'm going to let people, you know, there's so much music that's being released now. You don't agree? Yeah, there's a lot of music. I think the, you know the COVID thing. I think everybody kind of went to their shell, and they've been okay. Now it's time because I can't go out and do these other things. Um, we're not being so uh, distracted. Did uh, is there somebody on your list that you really would like to have either produce you or you'd like to perform with or who's your? I mean, when you when you're out performing, is there somebody that you go, oh man, there's that there's that person I kind of that makes you a little starstruck? Well. You know, I love, and what I say, you got to always roll with the times. And I love, one of my favorite artists is Rihanna. Rihanna has done so many different kinds and styles of music. She's done ballads to dance music to R&B. She's done a combination of everything, and everything works for her. So, and the greatness is that it's always good to work with different producers. You know what yeah. I mean? Some people get stuck with working with one particular type, and before you know it, you sound dated because there's someone else that's always up and coming and I'm open to working with different people. Um, sometimes one, when one name hits or there's one person that puts out a record that creates a buzz, everybody wants to work with that producer. Um, there's so many young and up and coming talent. I'm not working and looking for one in particular. What I'm looking for is that one sound, you know, that when you hear it, it's like, okay, this is me right here. Um, right now I don't have anyone in mind. I would love to do some stuff with you. Um, I think you, you know, a lot of the stuff that I hear, the mixes that you do, because you, you take a lot of acapellas and you make them yours. Yeah. I love the stuff that you do, like what you did with <laughs> pop, you know, when you, you, you know, uh, drop the drums and you brought them back and all that dramatic stuff works, you know. So yeah. I think, you know, you even shot an idea my way maybe like four months ago. I'm like, let's work. Let's continue to, you know, you know, let's experiment. What's the worst thing that can happen yeah. we it for a minute? We'll come back and we polish it, you know. So well, let's we should do something together, you know. Absolutely, yeah. I've got some. I've got some ideas. The one idea that we talked about before, I, I, I'm gonna. I uh, thought, how can we make this cool? And it's probably not gonna work. But uh, I'll think of something else. Um, yeah, was, yeah. That's the one thing about dance music too. It's really a producer driven genre. That it's really got to be really kind of tough for for an artist to be able to uh, kind of break out and do their own thing because. Like I said, it's, a, it's such a uh, producer-driven genre, you know. So the fact that you've, you you kind of broke out of that shell yourself, um, that just speaks volumes volumes of you. And you've got not just one genre. I mean, you've done Spanish music. You've done, you know, a full a foreign, the foreign house music too, dance music. You've got a couple of beautiful, beautiful ballads. Um, you know, you're a full, well-rounded artist. And that song that we did, that I did with Carlos, that we never really pushed, Don't Ever Say, Oh, um, you, I mean, no, a lot of people still don't know that record, you know, yeah. that record to me is, it's a no brainer, you yeah. know, so I want to re-release it. I want to do something, but Carlos is doing his own thing. The record is still, to me, it's perfect the way it is. And people haven't really, a lot of people don't know about it, you know? It's such a great song. And I, I've kind of taken it under my, I mean, for the, I love it from the, from the first, from the get, but um, just being able to, you know, doing the, the thing on Facebook that I do, I've kind of made it my own. I feel like I've kind of, put it under my wing and it's my anthem now. So people say, what's, I, I, I swear I get um, more requests about, or questions about that song. What is that song that you play every single now, I don't want to, and I don't want to cry. Uh, it's so, you know, I always, and I always say, that's my girl, Lizzo Melendez. Yeah. yeah man. I th and I thank you for, for doing, you know, what you do. <laughs> Cause really people do follow you. People do tune in and they listen to what you play and they follow by what you go by. Um, but don't ever say something that we have to definitely elaborate on and see what we can do. I think the record is good with the way it is, but I may even add that to my show. You, you know? should. Uh, you really should, especially when you're in Chicago. Yeah, I just that I don't yeah. have a lot of time on stage. You right. know, so that's why I'm trying to fight to get a little more time so I can throw these songs on. So for my birthday, I am looking forward to doing it because I'm going to do my show the way I want it to. You know, the way I feel it should be done. Coral's going to be there. Giggles is going to be there. Alex Malone is going to be there. That has a great dance record out. 
Um, he's still up and coming. Then I have my DJs. I don't have you, but um, yeah. you never know. You never know what we can do with you. You know. I'll check the flights as soon as I'm out here. Yeah, there we go. Oh man, so it's crazy. But I'm I'm thankful, and I hope to see my people at my birthday party. This is my flyer. That's it's flyer. August twenty first um, in Long Island City, Queens. The rooftop is gonna. It's called Five Star Banquet Rooftop. It's incredible, and the view of uh, New York and Queens is. It's crazy. So I'm very, I'm nervous, um, but I'm excited. What kind of dog do you have? That what? What kind of dog do you have? I hear a dog. In the oh, back. I have a Maltese Bichon Poo, and then I have a Terrier something something. <laughs> <laughs> I love my dogs. I have one that's feisty, and then I have another one that's just a very sweet, loving. Um, but every time she sees someone come in, she has, she takes a little bit of a. a takes little, a second. Yeah, yeah. So. I love so animals, funny. though. I mean, don't abuse animals, people. And I'm not saying that you guys do, but take care of your animals. Make sure that you can also adopt. There's so many, you know, shelters with homeless dogs. Yeah. And here I am a spokesperson for, for animal abuse. But there you go. I love animals. I really do. You know, and I eventually I want to do a benefit and I want the proceeds to go to animal shelters. So I have to um, narrow down what animal shelter I would like to donate to. And that's something that I'm going to work on as well. Yeah, we should definitely get together and do something. You know, yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You know, I love you. Thank you so much for taking time and to talk to me for even these few seconds. I appreciate that. Thank um, you. Well, I'm melting over here because it's like 95. My <laughs> AC is out. I just finished coming from shop, right? But I'm chilling, you know. And listen, ladies, we all multitask, and that's what it is. <laughs> so thank you for having me. Thank you for always supporting my music and me and everything that I do. And you ever need me, just all you got to do is pick up the phone. All right. Thanks so much. Right. This is Melendez, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.